All right. Hey guys. I am now live. So I'm going to go live on Instagram. <coughs> Excuse me. And get started here. Hey guys. So I am going live for our traditional Sunday live coaching call. So I am Stephanie Lincoln. I'm the founder of Fireteam Whiskey Military Wellness. And uh, I am a certified fitness trainer a uh, licensed mental health counselor and also I specialize in ketogenic uh, mental health nutrition and uh, a very really cool um, technique for um, abbreviated trauma resolution so um, I am a traditional therapist but I love doing the the two-hour trauma resolution sessions because you get the most bang for your buck out of that and um, it's a really cool technique and uh, it's all about brains and brain um, healing and how we can kind of tap into those natural healing mechanisms of the brain to resolve mental health issues. So really cool stuff out there about that and we're going to talk about the brain today. So I decided to review a couple of scientific studies today. Hi S. Cribs. Hey Gina, see you on here. Hi Carolina. Thanks for joining me live. So I'm going to go ahead and review a couple of studies tonight. Um, I um, I subscribe to Medscape, so I get kind of the latest research, basically in all the medical world. But I keep an eye on, especially, you know, any nutritional stuff, fitness, and also, of course, mental health. Um, but this all, all of the above, ties into the brain. So there was a couple of fascinating articles that came out kind of simultaneously. So I grabbed these, um, they're, they're pretty recent, but they both kind of say the same thing. Um, one is entitled, Fast Food Linked to Increase. I've gotta move you guys so I can see my screen. Fast Food Linked to an Increased Dementia Risk. So let me just give you a little background about what's going on with dementia and Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. Just like every other disease on the planet, um, it's these neurodegenerative diseases are, are on the rise and disproportionately so, right? So what I mean by disproportionately so is that the same rate by which people used to get these diseases, right? Let's just say I'm going to pull a number out of, out of the air now. That's Don't take this yeah, and then look up the specific number. I'm using it as an example. So let's just say 3% of, you know, any human who's live, who lives and dies on this planet has, you know, gets a neurodegenerative disease. Okay. So let's just say that was the rate back in, uh, you know, 1940. All right. Just pulling that number out of, out of my head. So now we're seeing, you know, very high rates and a massive increase of the rates of neurodegenerative diseases. Also cancers, also heart disease, also stroke. Add everything, pile it on, and we've pretty much seen an increase in every kind of, of significant chronic health condition. Um, and the only decreases we've had are in just more kind of transmittable diseases. Um, so that's not looking good for us. And why? So that's that's the kind of the theories and and the reasons why um, these research uh, these researchers do what they do is to try and figure out what kinds of newer things. So let's just say snapshot now, you know, 2020. What kinds of newer things could be contributing to what you know maybe weren't around back in 1940 when the rate was much much lower, right? So just giving you kind of an explanation and background of why we look at things like this. And um, these, these diseases are exponentially, you know, increasing um, and researchers are frantic to try and find these correlations of why we're seeing such an increase. So um, obviously we can guess and have some sort of, you know, hypotheses about these things. You know, you know what I'm going to say. So, as if, if you don't want to hear what I have to say about processed foods and fast foods, you might want to hop off right now, because it's better to just be in denial than to know what your fate is. Because I'm about to tell you what your fate is. 
if you're consuming these foods. So, um, and I'm not coming from a place where, uh, uh, where I didn't used to eat these foods on a daily basis either. You know, I was, God bless my mom, <laughs> I was raised on processed foods. You know, our, our foods consisted of boxed, packaged, and, you know, basically anything that could be microwaved or, you know, plopped in an oven. TV dinners were very frequent um, as dinners in our household. I ate cereal for breakfast and drank sodas all day long, never drank water, and, um, you know, ate, you know, processed, uh, you know, white breads and uh, sandwich meat and, you know, the thing that they call cheese that's not really cheese. It's like a cheese uh, product, quote unquote, right? I grew up on that. And you could, I'll show you my teeth. So see all those, I have tons of um, those old, uh, those old uh, cavity fillers, the mercury ones. So those are, you know, wonderful toxins that I have still carrying around in my mouth. So hopefully one day I'll have enough money to replace those things. But in the meantime, I'm actually going to talk about what to do about these things in my next coaching call next week. So I'm going to talk about if you have mercury fillings. There are some things that you can do to kind of reduce your toxin um, exposure because they are toxic. That's a given. We know mercury is toxic, so they're in our mouths. Um, so let's go back to fast food. So, you know, we, we all know, we all can say, okay, I understand. I know fast food's not the greatest choice, but how bad could it be, right? Or I know that these, you know, boxed and canned and bagged and, um, you know, frozen foods. I just had a nutrition coaching client uh, a couple days ago where all she eats is frozen foods. And she didn't think it was that bad, right? Because she got the healthy ones <laughs> from the store. And I was, oh, I was appalled and so glad that she was coming to me for help. Um, but we definitely have some work to do. Because I can't even imagine, you know, the amount of toxins she's consuming on a daily basis and calling it food because those foods are packed full of colors and preservatives and chemicals and seed oils. So it's just a huge inflammatory meal that she's just consuming and putting in her body. So what happens when we consume these foods? We, we may feel like, oh, they're not that bad. They're convenience foods. It's just easier, right? I don't eat that much, even though most people, when they say that, they definitely eat much more than they think they do. So let's look at a couple of these um, these studies here, and I got these off of Medscape. So this first one here is a fast is fast food is linked to increased dementia risk. So what is dementia? Dementia is basically a neurodegenerative condition of the brain, and no, you don't have to have dementia as an old person. I think there's a lot of assumption. That, oh, if, you, if I'm old, I'm just going to get dementia. That's what all old people get. No, that's not the case. You can be just as bright and intelligent and have wonderful memory up until the day you die. Your brain does not have to degenerate. Um, our, our lifestyle choices and our toxins and the stress and inflammation have created this issue of the assumption that you get these things when you get older. But it doesn't have to be the case. So, and specifically in this one, um, I found it really intriguing because fast food, we all know what that is, right? So, um, we know what that means. It's fried foods, it's processed foods, it's, I don't know if it's even really food at some of these places. Um, they're, you know, uh, fried in seed oils, there's tons of chemicals, lots of sugar, right? So all, all the things that we say that you should be avoiding and you're consuming these at a fast food place. And yes, even if you get the grilled chicken, first of all, try and find the ingredients. It, it's almost impossible on some of these websites and I've had to look them up as nutrition coach and they bury them quite, quite geniusly. And then when I show them to my clients, of they, they believe it's just white meat chicken and then there's all these chemicals and sugars in them and seed oils and you know so then they're like oh well I thought it was healthy <laughs> it's like but you have to be a smart consumer right if yes it took a while for me to, to find it I had to 
I had to dig for the ingredients, but they're there. They're required to be there. So, you know, if we're not, you know, doing the due diligence and figuring out what we need to do to make ourselves healthier and just by looking at what's in our foods, you know, ignorance is bliss, right? Oop, I think my Instagram went out, so hopefully Facebook is still on. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So, um, so this study I found really interesting because it said in addition for, of course, a diet high in ultra processed foods and fast foods are linked to an increase of dementia, increased risk for dementia. For every 10% increase in ultra processed food consumption, the odds of developing any kind of dementia rises by 25%. 25% for every 10% increase. So it's not even proportional, right? We're not even looking at a, a proportional increase. So even if you eat a little bit more just because, oh, you're busy, oh, it's not that big of a deal, a slight increase in your consumption of these foods can increase your risk by 25%. So that I, I thought that was really interesting part of the study was um, that just uh, out of balance increase in risk as you increase your consumption of ultra processed foods. So, um, oh yeah, and they made a point in the study, which I thought was, it was interesting. Not only they were, were they focusing on, okay, we know ultra processed foods are bad. They have this kind of stuff in it. We know that. But what most people don't even think about is the packaging that these foods come in, right? The, the, um, the plastic tubing, the, you know, the, the plastic uh, containers, the um, cans. The, any, I mean, think about all the plastics that, that are used. Um, even the paper that they wrap the hamburgers in, the fast food hamburgers are lined with plastic, right? So they don't soak through. Right, so they made a point in the study to point out that you have to remember that the um, the molecules from the packaging produced during heating. So you're putting hot food in these plastic packages, right, and handing them to people to eat, right. So the heating of this these plastic containers creates a a breakdown of those containers. So you're getting those microparticles of the packaging into the food, which you are consuming, which shouldn't be consumed by a human being. I don't know if anybody could say, yes, it's okay to eat plastic, but you are because you're eating the foods coming out of those containers. So I love that they pointed that out in this study. So I will um, drop the links um, on Instagram. I'll drop, drop the links in the bio. So you'll have to go over there, link in bio for this study. And then on Facebook, I'll just pop that right in the comments right below this, this video. Okay, so going to the next one. So basically this one says the same thing, right? So no surprise here, two studies in one year, they say the same thing. This one focused specifically on just ultra processed foods, not specifically fast food. So I wanted to do both just to kind of parallel how these things are the same, right? So um, uh, high intake of uh, uh, ultra processed foods um, influence our cognitive health many years later. So even if you feel like this is just a temporary thing, I wanted to point that out in this finding right? They did a, this is a, a longitudinal study of people who they, I guess they got the data from when they were, they started with uh, around age of 35 and then it's a longitudinal study. So I wanted to point out, and I like the study because it shows that they have a long-term focus on your increased risk. So if you feel like, okay, well, I'm young and I, you know, I can get away with it now and I'll just buckle down and I'll eat healthier later. Guess what? And I'm included in the mix here, guys, because I used to consume this shit too. Damage is done. So not that, 
hey, you should just throw on the towel and not actually eat real food. But damage is done, right? So, yes, you have already, if you have a history of eating these foods, you are, have already increased your risk of having these uh, neurocognitive declines as you get older. So I wanted to um, make sure that I covered this one because I thought that was an interesting point in this research study. So, um, yeah, they did a, a longer term uh, study on these people in the study. And, okay, so the, the follow up after eight years, people who consumed more than 20% of daily calories from ultra processed foods experienced a 28% faster rate of a decline of global cognition and a 25% faster rate of a decline in executive function. So compared to peers who consumed less than uh, who consumed less less than twenty percent of daily calories from ultra processed foods, so if you consumed less than twenty percent, then um, they they didn't put the data in there, but they were comparing this group of twenty five percent or more, so experiencing twenty eight to twenty five percent faster rate of decline of cognitive functioning. So um, they also talked about uh, specifically sugar sweetened beverages um, actually add another part to this. So not only is ultra processed foods kind of a categorical um, uh, thing that they're, that they're looking at in here, but they noticed that specifically separating out sugar sweetened beverages and that, that there are other studies that have isolated that variable actually have higher increases of uh, or decreases in neurodegenerative um, functioning. So um, sugar sweetened beverages as a part of the ultra processed foods is a significant factor here as well. So no, I'm not saying go eat all the McDonald's you want, just have a Diet Coke, right? Unless you, you know, you don't care about losing 25%, 28% of your brain functioning, then go right ahead. But um, yeah, I would definitely just caution and really, you know, we, we make these decisions so lightly, right? Out of convenience, it's just easier. But really, guys, I mean, I, I wish I, you know, going back, like you, you wish you knew then what you know now, right? At this point, you know, especially in, in the health game for, for myself and with me working with my clients in nutrition coaching, my advice is I'd rather eat nothing eat nothing nothing is fantastic <laughs> fasting has all sorts of cool benefits so guess what if you feel like fast food is your only option no it's not your only option because your your other option is just don't eat there you go just don't eat you're not going to starve to death that ain't happening so yeah, and when I point that out to my clients, they get pretty pissed off <laughs> because I'm like, no, it's not your only option. Guess what? Not putting anything in your pie hole is a great option, you know? So if that's if that's your only option is ultra processed foods, just don't eat and get the wonderful benefits of fasting, right? So when I travel, um, usually travel days, I eat nothing. I do a fast. So I'll, I'll just have my coffee in the morning on the way to the... the uh, Air, you know, the airport or if, if we're doing a long drive day in the RV, I just eat nothing. I just do a fast day and get the benefits from that. And, you know, I already covered, you know, the benefits of fasting. I cover that every month. So definitely check those videos out. So, you know, the bottom line is, and I'm going to drop these links in the bio for these two studies. You know, you, we've seen these increases of these rates of cognitive decline. In people, it's happening earlier, it's happening more frequently, and studies have definitely found very, very strong correlations with ultra processed foods, fast foods, and sugar sweetened beverages. So, the more you can cut these things out, I know we're coming up on New Year's and everybody's kind of focused on their resolution, right? But just know, and especially in this one study, 
even if you feel like you're doing this temporarily and it's just something you're doing now, the damage is being done. So the sooner you start, the sooner you can, you know, reduce your risk because you've already hurt your, your chances here and increased your risk. So, you know, I know for a fact that I have a lot of making up to do because I didn't start this journey until I was 35 years old. So, yeah, I've been doing this now for eight years and I've, I've you know, done a lot, reversed a lot of the damage, but I'm under no assumptions <laughs> that this, you know, that I've erased everything, all the damage that I caused. No assumptions at all. Because I know that these toxins and these things are very powerful and the damage has been done. But there is hope. Like my friend Dr. Christy says, the body heals. So it has innate systems where we can tap into, like intermittent fasting, doing, um, you know, heat saunas or cold therapies. And there's a lot of toxin binding um, foods and supplements that you can take to get those things out of your system, essential oils. Um, Gina's probably saying, essential oils! <laughs> essential oils can help you with that detox. Um, so, tons and tons of things that you can do to start to kind of mitigate some of this damage and this risk that you've done to yourself. But work with a health coach who knows those things. And, um, you know, of course, we're here, Fire Team Whiskey, to help you with that process. But thanks for joining me live. And um, I'm wishing you all a merry, very merry Christmas because I think next is it next weekend. I'm not. I'm totally lost <laughs> as to what day we're on. Maybe it's two weekends from now. Thank goodness. But um, if if you don't see me very happy, merry Christmas or or whatever um, that thing that you celebrate, just celebrate your life and health and look forward to a fabulous 2023. And uh, our Fire Team Whiskey wellness staff is here to support you with um, whatever we can help you with. And if we can't help you with something, then we'll be happy to refer you to somebody who can. So please reach out to us via Messenger, DM, and uh, let us know what you need and we'll see how we can help you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Hey, Fire Team Whiskey members, so um, we've got Marcus's wonderful, awesome program starting. So we turned it into a 30-day challenge. So that starts tomorrow. It's on the app. You have to be an app member to participate. So reach out to me if you don't fall into that category and um, or maybe you let your um, subscription lapse. You can join us. We start tomorrow. It's going to be an amazing program. So really look forward to that. And um, of course, we always have our New Year's um, challenge going on. So I'll be um, releasing information about that. And if you want to roll right into that, we're basically going to roll right off of this 30-day challenge right into the 30-day reset, which we always do every year in January. So that'll be... Um, Posting, well, I'll be posting about that very soon. So, hey, get into it, get challenges, get get hyped, get motivated. These challenges are a motivation for a lot of people. It keeps you engaged. It keeps you, you know, from getting bored. Um, it keeps you, you know, from getting into a routine. Keeps you challenged. So, um, join us, guys, if you'd like to. Definitely make sure to message me if you are not an app member. Or if you are an app member and you haven't let me know yet that you want to do the 30-day challenge, please let me know because I have to set up your account with that information. And um, thanks for joining and thanks for watching back if you watched this back and didn't join live. And uh, happy and merry holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or if you just like or don't like winter, <laughs> enjoy your holiday. All right. Bye-bye.